Hey guys, Gnome here. Today I'll explain how I start the engines on my Citation 501 in a very simplified way. I'll cover some basic systems and procedures and try to keep it short and sweet for you guys. So let's begin. As a side note, if it's not obvious, I could start the left or right engine first. Today we'll start with the left. When I press the left engine start button, the battery will turn the starter, which will turn the N2 shaft. The N2 shaft includes the compressor and the high pressure turbine. On my engine gauges, N2 is labeled as turbine. As they rotate to about 8 to 10 percent, about 3000 RPM, there is enough airflow inside the engine to safely start the fire. By moving the throttles from the off position to the idle position, the igniters automatically turn on. The igniters are electrical sparks similar to the red start button on the propane barbecue in your backyard. Let's see if you could hear the igniters. They tick every half second or so. I verify the igniters are sparking by seeing this green light turn on because I can't hear them from inside the cockpit. The next order of business is to make sure the fan is able to rotate. If I don't see it by 25% N2, I will immediately put the throttles back in the off position to stop the fuel and kill the engine. Sorry for briefly interrupting this video. If the terms N1, N1 shaft, combustion chamber, fan, N2 are confusing to you, I made an excellent video that explains how jet engine works in a very intuitive way, and I'll post a link in the description. Okay, so back to the engine start. All is normal, fan is starting to spin, so I know it's free to rotate. The second and last important item is to monitor the ITT. That's the temperature inside the engine. My specific engine cannot go above 500 degrees Celsius during start. But while monitoring ITT, I'll also briefly confirm the oil pressure and the fuel flow N1 rotation and then focus back on the ITT. Let's watch and try to follow. Okay, starting left engine. Rotation, 8%, ignition lights on. I got fan, I see the oil pressure, I got ITT, I got fuel flow. I got fan watching ITT, watching ITT, I got oil pressure watching ITT. The start sequence will terminate automatically at 40% N2. The igniters will stop sparking and the starter will turn itself into a generator. Yes, the starter is also a generator. Now that the engine is spinning at around 12,000 RPM, it also spins a generator which provides the aircraft with all its electrical needs. I also quickly verify that the start sequence completed successfully by the ignition light turning back to off and the start button light turning off as well. Okay, got a good start, ignition's off, fan, ITT below 500, fuel flow, oil pressure, oil temperature. Now that the left engine is running, the left generator is also charging the battery and I could see that by the left ammeter indicating over 100 amps. Once it falls below 100 amps, I know the battery is nice and charged and I could start the right engine. The right engine starter will get two sources of power, 33% from the battery and 77% from the already running engine generator. To give the left generator a bit more power, we bump the left engine N2 up to about 50%. Now let's start the right engine. This is called a cross-gen start, by the way. Ammeters below 100, bump up the N2 to about 50%. Clear right. N2 rotation, 8%. I got the ignition, I got oil pressure, I got fan, I got fuel flow, watching ITT. I got fan, watching ITT. Watching ITT. Don't forget the link in the description to the How a Jet Engine Works video I made for you guys. And if you find this video interesting, please like and subscribe.